This is Tom Bernanke and today I'm going over a very, very common deficiency, B12 deficiency in America and England. It's said that over 20% of people over 60 have a B12 deficiency. This can lead to a lot of symptoms like numbness in your hands, feet, fatigue, difficulty focusing, memory issues, but it's often overlooked and misdiagnosed. That's why you have over 20% of people having this thing. Make sure you stick around and watch all the way to the end. We're starting now. The thing with B12 deficiency is our body cannot produce B12. And sometimes people can have difficulty absorbing it, especially people with malabsorption disorders, so stomach problems, vegetarians, vegans, it's generally not in a vegetable diet. There is also an autoimmune condition called pernicious anemia where your autoimmune system attacks your digestive tract and this leads to poor absorption of vitamin b12 so no matter how much food you eat it's just not getting into your system it's usually in a meat diet so it's very common in meat it's highest in beef liver specifically so uh, for all the people that comment in my videos about the carnivore diet or the liver king so i love that liver king guy you're getting your b12 most likely but we're going to tell you when you're not also common in people over 60 because as you become over 60 it gets more common and over 20 percent of people in the united states and england have a b12 deficiency and it's so overlooked like me as a doctor that's something i was never really trained to look for to hear these numbers is crazy it's also common in women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. The thing is, with any of these treatments, always make sure to get checked out by your doctor. And if you're in the Michigan area, I'd love for you to come see me because the first thing we do is we would order blood tests to check for vitamin B12. And there's three criteria. People that have over 300 picograms per milliliter, that's considered normal. People who are between 200 to 300 picograms per milliliter, that's considered to be at risk. And people under 200 picograms per milliliters, that's considered to be a deficient person, which 20% of people over 60 in America are. Now, picogram is a tiny little unit. If you ever watch uh, UFC, John Jones uh, got caught with te testosterone. They tried to say it was just a few picograms, but you can see what kind of picograms can do for you as far as hormones go. So the first symptom that B12 deficiencies cause is anemia. So this can cause fatigue if you're tired, if you're sleepy, if you feel like you have no energy. It's because vitamin B12 is needed to develop your red blood cells properly. So specifically, B12 is involved in DNA synthesis and you develop very large red blood cells called megoblast anemia. And these are big with underdeveloped hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is what holds oxygen. So the oxygen carrying molecule is underdeveloped, whereas the cell is big. This is a little bit different than like iron deficiency anemia, which is considered microcytic. So iron deficiency, you have tiny little red blood cells that don't hold a lot of oxygen. Whereas with vitamin B12, you have huge ones called megablastic cells. And what happens is they're just underdeveloped and they're not working properly. And that leads to symptom number two. If you have all these improperly functioning red blood cells, it leads to a red blood cell breakdown product called bilirubin. So bilirubin can make your skin look pale, yellow, your, the whites of your eyes can start to yellow a little bit as well. So that can be something called jaundice. So that's related. You have really big red blood cells that are not carrying oxygen properly. So you're tired, you feel lazy, you can't focus very well. It seems like you have foggy, cloudy feelings in your brain. And on that note, do you have headaches? So a lot of things can cause headaches, but vitamin B12 levels, the, in studies they've shown people who have less vitamin B12s are more likely to have headaches. And as you supplement that and make that get back to normal, your headaches can go away in the vast majority of people over three months in this study. And depression. So people with low levels of vitamin B12 lead to a higher amino acid called homocysteine. Low vitamin B12s lead to high homocysteine, which is an amino acid. They found that people with migraines have low B12 in certain cases and high homocysteine. And if you correct that, then the migraines can get better. In this 2020 study, they showed people with low B12, high homocysteine, 
are more likely to get migraine headaches. GI issues. So GI issues, so stomach, nausea, vomiting, bloating, cramps, constipation. Now this is a tricky one for me because almost everything can cause stomach problems. That's hard to diagnose vitamin B12. But if you're having stomach problems, it could be the vitamin B12, but I wouldn't rely on that one too much. Difficulty focusing. This kind of goes with fatigue and headaches. Realistically, if your vitamin B12 is low, in studies they found that that does lower your memory, your acuity, your ability to focus. So for example, if I was a student in class and I had low vitamin B12, I wouldn't be able to focus as much. And that's proven in a study over three months as they replenished these vitamin B12 levels, then people did a lot better over time. So something called glossitis or stomatitis. So that's basically beefy, swollen, red tongue and mouth sores. This can happen, but this is a more advanced finding. I wouldn't look for this right off the bat. You probably have bigger problems by the time this happens. Muscle cramps, muscle weakness, erectile dysfunction can happen. A whole host of things can happen, but here's the big one that I deal with a lot is numbness, burning and tingling in the hands and the feet. This is a condition that can be known as peripheral neuropathy. In clinic, I see this a lot. People's feet are burning, they're aching at night, and it's because the nerves are farthest away from your body. And you need that vitamin B12 to develop your central nervous system and your peripheral nerves properly. So this is an amazing study they did just last year. And essentially what they did was they tested people with diabetic neuropathy and they supplemented them with supplements. So half the people got supplements, half did not. The group that got the supplements did significantly better as far as neuropathy pain scores. And on average, their levels went from 200 picograms per milliliter to about the 770 picogram per milliliter range. This is an amazing high quality double blind study that had amazing results for neuropathy. They did a separate second double blind study with extra stuff like superoxide dismutase, alpha lipoic acid, carnitine, and then supplemented with B12. So basically they threw everything at it and same kind of thing. The levels improved of B12, the pain went down, the neuropathy symptoms improved significantly. So two double blind tests. I usually find that people who supplement with this, if this was the cause, they start to do better. Although sometimes it is irreversible. I would say the vast, vast majority of the time it does get better, but there are other causes of peripheral neuropathy as well. So the big thing is you want to make sure you don't have diabetes. You wanna make sure you don't have alcoholic neuropathy. You wanna make sure it's not chemotherapy related peripheral neuropathy. You wanna make sure it's not antioxidant related. You wanna make sure it's not the hundred other different causes. And that's where coming to see a podiatrist like me can make a big difference if you're having them, these symptoms because it's not just vitamin B12. If you had that numbness, burning, and tingling, we would first test two-point discrimination to see how well your skin can feel. And as you can't feel very well, that means the nerve function is a little bit worse. So a tuning fork can also help assess for this so people with better sensation can feel it more. Same thing with the SEMS Weinstein monofilament to see where you can actually feel sensation in the skin. If it's not in the foot, that's generally not good. We can also do a biopsy to see under the microscope how much nerve growth you have, or we could do tests such as a nerve conduction study or an EMG, which measures how well your muscles function, and then we can adjust accordingly with treatment. Below, we link our longer peripheral neuropathy guide where we go over the new treatments available. How do you get vitamin B12? So the recommended intake is 2.4 micrograms. So that doesn't seem like a large amount. And realistically, most people can get this through their diet, except for certain reasons. When we mention vegetarians, vegans, people with stomach problems, I'm gonna start with this. If you have a stomach problem, if you have a GI tract issues, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, there's two things you can do. There are sublingual vitamin B12s. So basically putting it in your mouth like a lozenge and basically just sucking on it, that can get you some B12. If you can't eat meat, there are a lot of vitamin B12 rich vegetarian foods, milk, yogurt, cereals, shiitake mushroom, cheese, 
nori special fortified yeasts, I probably wouldn't eat it, but there are options out there. Look at all these supplement options. There's no shortage of B12 supplements. You can get vegan, vegetarian ones. There's everything out there. But if you have stomach or digestion illnesses, get the sublingual ones or come see us at our clinic for the injection. Or you can do an injection. So what's the point of injections? Well, you should do them if for some reason you can't digest sublingual or through the stomach, but studies really show that the sublingual works just as good, if not better. So this has been studied. I couldn't find a single study that advocated for why an injection should be done over a pill or food. I really want to give the injections a fair shake. So I even found a study where they injected singers for uh, a sore throat. And unfortunately, even with the vitamin B12 injections, it showed absolutely no difference in the soreness of their singing voice. They even did a study with over 400 people comparing the different methods, injection versus the sublingual pill versus nasal sprays. And the sublingual pill was actually the clear winner. So I see a lot of these shots for sale for like weight loss, for extra stuff, and they're all cash pay prices at these clinics. I don't understand the reasoning. Maybe I'm missing something. It even seems like they're being promoted for weight loss, but there's absolutely no scientific evidence that I could find that this is helpful for weight loss in any way. So in the comments, tell me if I'm crazy or if I'm just missing something. There's two things that I would do in clinic. We can check with a blood test for your vitamin B12, or you can check for the homocysteine. So we kind of noticed if the B12 goes down, your homocysteine goes up. You can check for both. The homocysteine can be an option as well to test. And I mentioned those levels, if you're over 300 picograms per milliliter, that's good. If you're under 200, that's bad. In the middle, you probably want to supplement anyway. Here's where the foods come in. The single best thing you could do is beef liver. So even taking some beef liver like once per week, that should be able to get you your levels. Basically meats, fish can do extremely well. A B12 is not usually found in vegetables. So if you're vegan or vegetarian, you might want to supplement in some other ways. And there are a lot of studies out there that basically show if you take B12 supplements and vitamins, and there's some recommended ones below, but this can help reverse a lot of that nerve pain. It can help with back pain. Now these studies aren't perfect because there's just so many factors. Like those nine symptoms I mentioned, even though 20 plus percent of people in America are B12 deficient according to some of these studies, it's probably not the cause. You know, there's just so many other different causes that you have to properly diagnose. So that's where checking out with your doctor and getting that blood test becomes so important. And the beauty of taking vitamin B12 is these supplements are so effective. They essentially have like 200,000 times what your daily recommended intake is. It's insane. But the beauty is because vitamin B12 is a water soluble vitamin, it does not overdose. Basically, it just gets excreted in your urine. So if you take too much, you just pee out too much and that's it. So the answer is officially there's no real side effects and from what I can tell, nobody can really overdose on this, but always check with your doctor. And the big thing is if you have numbness, burning, tingling, if your feet are aching, if you're weak, if you're tired, check out some of the videos below. We talk a lot about peripheral neuropathy causes of burning feet. And if this video helped, share it with a family member, share it with people that need the help. You're helping this channel out and we appreciate you guys. We'll see you on the next one.